Uh, hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this Grasshopper tutorial, I want to convert a series of closed curves. As you can see here, I have four of them, uh, and convert that into a building using the 2D aggregation uh, from the Parakit plugin. So if you go to Parakit uh, Pattern Generator, you can see that we have this 2D aggregation component. We're going to talk about this. As you can see here, I can change the number of expansion for the first floor the second one, the third, and the last one. So uh, here you can see that we can control that uh, to produce uh, different buildings using this simple 2D aggregation. I'm going to explain how the basic works and how we can uh, control it. We can also control the last uh, height of the floors. So I'm going to also talk about that. And finally, uh, make the building as an extrusion. So if I bake it, we have uh, the building like this. Uh, you can also go to our website if you want to download these six different ideas. I have put this in example file. So the first idea, as you can see here, uh, is a rectangle, which is going to produce uh, this form. Uh, then we have the base a pattern, which I explained at the first of the video, which you can produce different results. Uh, the third idea is about a triangle. As you can see here, we can also uh, expand and make interesting buildings. Then if we give a hexagon, uh, we can also use this to the aggregation to make this building. And also you can use other curves to produce interesting results. As you can see here, uh, I can make this building by just changing the number of iteration. And at the end, you can see by changing and giving a pattern to the input, we can make an ellipse-like building and produce different results, which is also interesting that you can do this uh, simply by using this 2D aggregation. Okay, let's first talk about the components. So if I go to the Parakit plugin uh, and go to pattern generation, we have this 2D aggregation component and it can be uh, used for different uh, inputs for the base curve. But for now, what I want to do here and get started with this component is to just draw a series of rectangles. So I'm going to just draw a rectangle here and uh, make a copy by using the Alt key and bring it a little bit up and just give that to the base curve. So right click and extract the base curve and set multiple curve and select these three uh, curves, for example. Uh, as you can see here, it's going to give you an output immediately. This is like the iterations and this is the branch count. Because we have three uh, curves, what I have to do is to define iteration. Uh, I can make three number sliders by going to the params menu, utility, and let's use this gene pool. Double click and say we need three number sliders with zero decimals from zero to 10 because we need an integer number. And I'm going to just give that to the iterations. Because we want each of them to iterate on each number sliders, we have to graft uh, both inputs so they run separately. So this is going to be the first one. This is going to be the second one, as you can see here. And this is going to be the last one. Obviously, if you want to make it for a building, you have to start with a big number and just decrease down to uh, make it completely uh, stacked on each other. So after producing that, there is also a branch count uh, which if I make really small numbers, because it's going to go really high, I'm going to say one, two, three. Again, we have to graft this. Uh, let's put all of them to one. Uh, you can see by putting it to one, it's going to use one of the edges of this rectangle to expand. But if you put it to, for example, two for the top part, you can see that it's also using this edge and this edge to expand. So it's going to expand uh, more in this uh, plan. And if I just increase that to maybe four, you can see it's going to completely expand in all four directions of this rectangle. If you have a polyline uh, and you want to expand it, uh, obviously you can uh, get this branch count to go at the count of the edges. Uh, I'm going to stick to one. Uh, by default it's one and see how it goes. Okay, another thing we can do here is uh, after getting the aggregated curves is to make the building. Uh, we can just um, unify all of the curves into one to make the plan. So I'm going to go to the 
uh, intersection shape and use this region union so the region union is going to make it into one and let's just give that here uh, the first one is like eight curves six and three and if I just turn off everything you can see that uh, they have been uh, united into one curve in each plan we don't need to give the plane because uh, it's obviously going to find the plane of the curve for the inputs uh, so if I just go to the params uh, menu and give a surface to the output here you can see that it's completely uh, converted into a closed curve and then we can extrude it up so just surface uh, freeform and extrude and let's just extrude that up in the Z direction and uh, to get the height uh, we can do that in uh, Rhino but let's just uh, assume that this is uh, the input for the extrusion okay we have to uh, obviously make it extrude uh, based on the distance between these uh, sections so to do that what we can do here is to go back to the curves and uh, maybe we can find the centroid for this is a curve uh, analyzes polygon center just faster than surface area and then we have the center of area uh, we have to find it the distance between them so I'm going to go to the point vector point and deconstruct the point the reason I'm doing this is because I want to find the Z component of each of these curves uh, these uh, polylines and here you can see that the first one is zero because it's on the ground then it's like 20 and it's like 39 at the top uh, obviously the first one has to be uh, has to extrude like 20 the next one has to extrude 39 minus 20 uh, what you can do here is to go to the math and there is uh, in the operators a relative difference okay compute relative difference for a list of data which is exactly what we want you give it here uh, the first one is zero which is obviously not what we want but the first a polyline has to extrude 20 the next one is going to extrude 18 and because the third one doesn't have any uh, upper part uh, it's not going to uh, actually zero is uh, has to be replaced with something so 20 18 and a number we have here and the zero has to be gone so what I have to do here is to also make a number slider for the last floor just type this last and uh, also get rid of the zero so what you can do here is to go to the sets sequence and say call index remove the index zero and then add this one to the last floor so I'm going to go to the PAMS menu and hit number use the shift key to add it up and uh, as you can see here they are not adding up because they are a little bit different this is zero this is zero zero you just have to flatten uh, this uh, M output because it's going to just make it like zero okay so when they don't add up always check if they're adding and now uh, that's correct so 20 18 and 12 okay now uh, we can give this to the Z direction the problem here is that this is in groups and this one is not if you don't know about this uh, I'm going to put up a video here uh, or you can search uh, the flatten graft video on our YouTube channel but anyway uh, again we have to graft it back so both of them are in separate groups and they're running or you can flatten this one and also don't graft it anyway because it's uh, in the same input so there are three base surfaces three z directions and now you can see that let's just give this a uh, custom preview from the params uh, from the display menu and here you can see that i always use a surface b rep edge to also see the edges and here you go you can see that you can play around and also this is going to be the height of the last okay so this is a closed curve and then we can just make an alt copy set multiple curves and here you can see it's going to make it like this there are some fixes we have to do for it so for example if this is like uh, four inputs we have to also make this 
uh, double click and make it four so we have control on all of it uh, another thing is that in uh, because the polygon center area doesn't have any output for the uh, closed polyline uh, we can make it surface area and give that to the point uh, another thing we have to fix here is uh, for the region union because the united region is uh, has some holes inside that we have to fix that as you can see here we have like seven surfaces but we have four base curves we have to always have a four surface output so the extrusion gets correct as you can see here we have seven surfaces four extrusions and it's just uh, making it uh, go to the wrong output okay. so what we have to do is to delete the surface and instead of that use the uh, surface boundary so let's check that out I'm going to bake it and you can see that that's correct because we had some holes inside our model so I'm going to give that to the base uh, remember that this is grafted so I have to also graft this input wherever you want to put here and then we have the extrusion correctly let's go back remember that the first uh, plan floor has to have more expansion than just less and less so we get the building always uh, on the top of each other so as you can see here uh, this is also an input you can give so I'm going to just uh, if I change the curves you can see it's going to also change the height of this and remember that the last one also can be extruded separately uh, for a different height so I'm going to just internalize this so you can download this example file uh, from our website okay thanks for watching if you have any question just ask below and see you next time bye